Why is Pizza Hut so bad? Actually, their pizzas are very tasty. Pizza Hut was once the top pizza and even Italian restaurant chain in the world. A truly inspirational story. Even in 2020, it was still the world's biggest pizza chain by the number of outlets, an impressive 17,639 restaurants. However, it is now a distant number two to Domino's Pizza in terms of sales. Let's see how Pizza Hut became the top global pizza brand, but then how a very bad business strategy and infighting eventually relegated the company to the number two spot. Pizza Hut was founded in 1958 by brothers Dan and Frank Carney in their hometown of Wichita, Kansas, while they were still college students. They picked pizza because it was a relatively new item in the heartland of America. With just $600 borrowed from their mother, the Carney boys and a friend who actually knew how to make pizza, John Bender, rented a small building at 503 South Bluff in downtown Wichita and bought old pizza-making equipment. Have you ever wondered where they came up with their name? Their logo only had room for eight letters, and Pizza Hut fit. As a marketing ploy to generate buzz, they even gave away pizza on opening night. Business steadily grew, and a year later, in 1959, they incorporated the company in Kansas. Another friend, Dick Hauser, opened the first franchise unit in Topeka, Kansas. In addition to their delicious pies, Pizza Hut served other dishes such as pasta, breadsticks, and desserts. They also sold soft drinks and alcohol, which generated high profit margins, which helped to pad their pocketbooks. Pizza Hut seemed to be great for many people because their pizza toppings were more authentically Italian. The texture of the pizza was also fluffy on the inside, with a crispy outer crust. In the early 1960s, the Pizza Hut brand grew through heavy marketing focusing on their authentic pizzeria idea. In 1962, the Carney brothers bought out Bender's interest, and Robert Kissholm joined the company as treasurer. By 1966, the number of pizzeria franchise units grew to 145. Their first foreign franchise opened in Canada in 1968. This was followed by the establishment of the International Pizza Hut Franchise Holders Association, or IPHFHA. Their corporate strategy prioritized sales and profit growth. In 1970, Pizza Hut opened units in Munich, Germany, and Sydney, Australia. That same year, the chain's 500th restaurant opened in Nashville, Tennessee. In 1971, Pizza Hut became the largest pizza chain in the world by sales and number of restaurants. At the time, there were just over 1,000 Pizza Hut outlets. A year later, Pizza Hut made its long-awaited public offering of 410,000 shares of common stock on the New York Stock Exchange. Unfortunately, being a public company pressured Pizza Hut to grow recklessly. Carney said in 1972, we lost control of operations when we realized we had to learn to plan. In 1973, Pizza Hut expanded further by opening stores in Japan and Great Britain. Three years later, the chain had more than 100 restaurants outside of the United States and 2,000 units in its franchise network. In the following year, Pizza Hut replaced its original 1958 Red Roof logo with a slanted one projecting a more hip and laid-back image. The Hut then merged with PepsiCo in 1977 to become a division of the global soft drink and food conglomerate. Sales reached $436 million that year, and a new $10 million headquarters was officially opened in Wichita. They introduced their pan pizza in 1980, which became one of their most successful new menu items. Pizza Hut showed their strong growth in the late 80s and early 90s. They continued to open many franchise outlets and started a home delivery service. By the 1990s, they derived a quarter of their total sales from delivery and takeaway. However, the tide began to turn in 1994, when profits actually declined by 21%. While Pizza Hut's dine-in restaurants were the core of their business, their hungrier competitors, Domino's, Papa John's, and later Little Caesars, aggressively grew the delivery and carry-out sales. Domino's in particular emphasized technology to improve the delivery experience for its customers. Obviously, Pizza was very late to aggressively roll out delivery, but why? Was management that bad or stupid? Were Domino's, Papa John's, and Little Caesar's management teams so much smarter? There are probably three reasons why Pizza Hut was so slow to get into the delivery game. First, to begin with, the Carney brothers picked the wrong food item to build a dine-in restaurant empire around. While they identified a food category that would grow dramatically over the following decades, they unfortunately chose the one that travels well, unlike gourmet steaks or seafood. For the first few decades, as pizza was still a novelty food item for many people, the dine-in experience attracted many customers. Then, as pizza became a more common food option, eating at home became increasingly more popular. Pizza delivery became the dominant long-term industry trend. 
Business Strategy 101. It is nearly impossible to remain the market leader when you buck the long-term industry trend. Second is hubris. Because Pizza Hut was the dominant market leader, they probably thought they could lead the pizza industry with their vision. Initially, delivery was a small segment of the overall market. However, as delivery grew faster than dine-in and represented a greater portion of the overall pizza demand, Pizza Hut probably thought delivery was a fad and assumed it would flatline over time. It was inconceivable that delivery would ever overtake the beloved dine-in experience. Finally, management and its franchises didn't want to change their business model because dine-in made Pizza Hut the market leader. And even more importantly, dine-in was much more profitable than delivery for its franchisees. Franchisees greatly preferred dine-in restaurant sales over delivery because they could sell other menu items, often with higher profit margins, alongside their pizza. In fact, Pizza Hut might have accepted lower profit margins on their pizzas by using high-quality ingredients throughout significantly raising prices to draw customers into their stores and make even more money by selling other items. Ironically, by maximizing margins on pasta instead of quality, this strategy might have also left the door open to Olive Garden, an Italian restaurant chain that focused on pasta and its endless salad bowls, which later became America's largest chain of Italian-themed full-service restaurants. The addition of high-quality pasta alongside its popular pizzas might have continued to attract dine-in customers since pasta doesn't travel as well as pizza. Because Pizza Hut was synonymous with dine-in pizza and difficult to compete with head-on, Domino's and other rivals instead focused on delivery, which was a smaller segment and less profitable. Obviously, in hindsight, Pizza Hut made the wrong choice by seeding delivery, the higher growth segment which would later become the dominant segment in the pizza industry, to its scrappier competitors. The shift to delivery meant unappealing changes for Pizza Hut's franchisees. They preferred large territories for each of its restaurants so that the restaurant don't cannibalize each other's sales, which came at the expense of longer delivery times. This channel conflict between restaurant and delivery sales hindered Pizza Hut's delivery competitiveness. Had the company more aggressively made the transition from restaurants to delivery throughout its restaurant network, it still would have maintained its dominant market position. Unfortunately, it wasn't until 1986 that Pizza Hut began to offer delivery through most of its territories. But by then, the writing was on the wall, and it was playing catch-up on the dominant long-term industry trend, the move away from dine-in to delivery and takeaway. Pizza Hut, nevertheless, tried to play catch-up by associating its brand image with delivery. They made fanfare by delivering pizza to the White House in 1989, followed up by the first-ever space delivery in 2001, and Mount Kilimanjaro in 2016. It also tried to fight back with new menu items. Cheese stuffed crust pizza was another success, with popular TV commercials featuring Donald and Ivana Trump in 1995. Unfortunately, Pizza Hut also tried to be more competitive on price by lowering the quality of their ingredients, item by item, which eventually damaged their brand image. Unfortunately, its bid to rehab its quality pizza image and attract younger customers failed in late 2014, when its flavor of now, with a completely revamped menu and new menu options, flooded. In fact, sales declined slightly the following year because it didn't attract new customers and confused its traditional ones. The changes were quietly rolled back. This brings us to the end of our video. When was the last time you ate a Pizza Hut pizza? At restaurant or at home? Do you think Pizza Hut can become number one again? Comment on the bottom right. Thank you for watching our video. Before you head out, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and click the bell icon for more videos like this one. And before we sign off, here's another insightful business video you might enjoy.